Yeah, so my name is Jacob Lopez, tattoo artist out of Phoenix, Arizona. This month we're celebrating 10 years that I've been tattooing. It's been very interesting, it's been beautiful, one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my life, but I love it. It's my passion now, you know, it's my obsession, it's what I, what I wake up every day wanting to do and, and it is, it's exciting being able to create something that is in your client's mind and bringing it out of them and, and bringing it to life and then they get to keep it on their body for the rest of their lives. It's just incredible. There's nothing like it. We actually uh, opened up Jacob J. Inc. Studios last year. Uh, it, it actually happened out of the wake of COVID. Um, here in Arizona, there's not a lot of regulations and you can tattoo out of your home. It doesn't look the best. And I was going to continue tattooing. My wife told me, you're not bringing nobody here uh, to the house. And and when she said that, we both knew, she told me the only option was opening up a studio. And we found this place. Uh, it's, honestly, it's it's been, we love the area, we love the location of it, uh, right in the heart of Uptown Phoenix near the Biltmore area. Up and coming area, modern, uh, that a modern industrial vibe to it. As soon as we opened up shop here, uh, it, it, it was actually great. We were received with a lot of uh, clientele, uh, a lot of support from a lot of my old clients and a whole lot of new clients, which I didn't expect. I think that first two to three months, if I read it right, it was about 70% was new clientele that were coming through. I guess I, we didn't expect that at first. And come to find out, uh, people were were wanting to come to a, a legitimate place and not be at, at the home anymore. Because of COVID, my wife and I were forced to open up a location. There was just no other way for me to continue tattooing during the middle of COVID. Uh, I was down, I was feeling out of it. I actually had gained a lot of weight. Um, it, it, this was my outlet, it's my passion. And I wasn't able to tattoo during that year. Luckily enough, we were doing all right. We were, I had a full-time job. I was doing work from home. We had enough toilet paper at home. <laughs> and uh, as time went on, I knew I needed to get back into tattoos. My clientele would, would message and, and ask, when are you getting back into it? Uh, when we found this place, it all worked out perfectly. Well, I wouldn't say perfectly. It, it, was, uh, a, it was a challenge to get everything up and running the way we did. But a, as time went on, we were able to open up shop and little, little by little, building it out, uh, adding in more furniture, adding in more uh, decoration. My wife loves decorating, so everything you see in here, a lot of it was her idea. My wife has been a huge inspiration in my life, instrumental actually in creating this, keeping it running more than anything. Uh, I'm an artist, uh, my mind is, all over the place and it's hard for me to keep organized with things i need systems and and calendars and and all that and my wife is incredible at that she can keep everything all the t's crossed and the i's dotted uh she believed in me more uh during the hard times during uh in the beginning more than my own family uh, she saw my artwork and said, you need to be in a tattoo shop. During that time, I used to work at a, at a shop. It's, it's not the same name anymore, but she got me the interview. And I never thought about being in a tattoo shop during that time. She got me the interview. I was able to work there, grind it out, learned a lot. Uh, learned from my old mentor, Porky Martinez. He's out of Knucklehead now. Um, but even more so, uh, learned a lot from my wife. She has a lot of that drive and that, that, that go-getter attitude and mentality. I'm the artist, she's the driver, you know, and, and together we make a hell of a team. Nowadays, I tell everybody that she's, she's the CEO, you know, and then I'm just the, the talent. <laughs> I get that question a lot. What, do you, what kind of tattoo style do you like to do? I, back in the day, I would say everything. I like tattooing everything, traditional, geometric, realistic, black and gray color. I would say everything. Nowadays, uh, I lean towards black and gray realism and especially uh, sculptures and uh, statues. I love the Greek god statues, the Roman uh, during that era type statues and, and then the Venetian paintings and uh, da Vinci, uh, though, that kind of style I love a lot. I love doing color as well, uh, color realism. 
uh, and, and right now I'm in the middle of creating my own style, starting to put things together uh, and, and kind of mash that to create my own version. The next challenge is going to be getting people to come in and do that style, but we'll get there little by little. We're actually getting close to this month in, in May. It's now 10 years of me tattooing. Uh, it was my last it was my last month of high school. I started practicing on oranges and bananas. A friend of mine had already been doing tattoos and I asked him how he got started practicing on oranges and bananas. Um, I asked him where he got his machine off eBay. I, bought, I did the same thing, an $80 set, three machines, power supply, the worst inks you can think of, some practice skins. And I would take those practice skins, the oranges, the bananas, I'd take them in, in my backpack to school, show my friends during lunch. Uh, the bananas all bruised from being in my backpack and do a dragon kind of wrapping around the, the whole banana and like, yeah, check it out. And all my friends like, yeah, hell yeah. And then one day they're like, yeah, I'll get tattooed with you. And little by little, as time went on, just tattooing my friends for free and they can't say nothing if I mess them up because it's for free. But uh, little by little, just tattooing my friends and starting to fall in love with it. And just recently, Facebook sent me a memory from uh, 2012 when I started. It was the month after from June. I had posted, fuck tattoos, I'm done. And I don't know, I think I, maybe I messed somebody up or, or wrote, uh, you know, the, the, uh, wrote, misspelled a tattoo or something. But I was, in my mindset, I, I always thought that I just wanted to continue doing tattoos and grinding it out. But at one point, I did struggle with it. It is not an easy grind. You have to put time and effort. You don't make money off of it right away. Uh, and I would always do it on the side until I started working at a, at a tattoo shop. This time, I actually, uh, most recently when we opened up this location, this is my full-time gig. This is, this is our, our source of income. Uh, and it's, it's our livelihood. I had tried that in the past. I think it was 2015, 2016, around there. Uh, tried working at a tattoo shop full time and I had left my job, uh, I wasn't ready. I, I didn't understand marketing. I didn't know how to put myself out there, how to reach out to people. I hadn't worked on my own styles and, and done enough drawings to show everybody. Uh, I ended up getting evicted from my first apartment uh, and I still have that bill, uh, something like $7,000 that they want. I am not paying that, <laughs> you know, I'm leaving that. And it was a big lesson learned, you know, as time has gone on, I've also learned that uh, you, don't, you don't take L's, you take lessons. And that, that time taught me a lot so that I was ready and prepared for this era of our lives. Uh, and now we're in a much better, better place. One of the things that was a challenge, but I was very excited for uh, that happened, I'm gonna say it about three, in, three years into tattooing, was doing color portraits. And I started during a time where it was still considered, you know, the pirate era of tattooing. It was starting to change a bit. There was more technology starting to come into the tattoo world. Uh, the, the new way of thinking about tattoos was barely being introduced. But the old mindset was you don't tattoo portraits unless you got five to seven years under your belt. And that's actually what they told me. And my, even my mentor, he was, he was weary of it. And I totally understand that. He waited a while before he did a color portrait. But my first portrait actually was a giveaway. It was Johnny Depp, uh, Crybaby, from the movie Crybaby. Um, and my wife, she didn't tell me until years later. She said that she was actually worried. She didn't think that I was going to... Uh, she, she knew that I was going to be able to do it, but she was worried about the outcome, is what she tells me. Um, but it, it was actually... It came out way better than I expected as well. I was sweating bullets the whole time. Uh, and it, it, that was one of the things that kind of launched me into uh, where I'm at now, doing way more portraits and doing more realism, especially still having the color portrait and color tattoos under my belt. More recently, especially, more and more people are starting to reach out to me to get color pieces because out here, uh, Arizona is still considered part of the West Coast. If you were to look at the entire U.S., West Coast is known for black and gray, Chicano, uh, sort of that, that smooth shading style. Uh, and you'll get people traveling from the East Coast out here to the West Coast to get their black and gray work. And then vice versa, uh, West Coast travels to the East Coast to get their color work. 
And so a lot of people still reach out to me trying to get color pieces, which I love, you know, it's uh, something I want to keep doing and, and not just change my style. Even though I love black and gray, uh, I want to mix the two. So that way I can still do the black and gray that I love and then keep that color side of me uh, as time goes on and see what that develops into. To get prepared for your tattoo, it starts off the day before your appointment, get a good night's sleep. It, it's, it's instrumental, it helps out your body a lot, you're gonna be going through a lot of stress, uh, so you want your body well rested. If you don't wanna bring water, um, or you forget to bring water, don't worry, we'll have that for you, but if you can bring that, you wanna stay hydrated during the whole session. Um, you want to have at least a breakfast in the morning. Something light is fine, but at least have something in your body, uh, some sort of carbs, because you're going to be burning calories during your session and you don't want to pass out during your tattoo session. Wear something comfy. Sometimes we'll have the AC running or if it's a cold time of year, we might not have the heater on. Uh, also, you're going to be uh, going through a lot of pain. Comfy is better. Wear something comfy. Wear something that if we need to get to a certain part of your body that you can either pull up easy, stretch easy, or that we can work around a lot easier. Obviously, we can cover up any part of the body that, that is needed to, but if you can wear something that works for that tattoo, that'd be so much easier. It saves us a lot of time. Any sort of entertainment that you can think of, bring it, man. Uh, bring a magazine, a book, tablet, headphones, whatever your process is to get through the tattoo, that's gonna be something that I wanna support you on, because the more comfy you are and the more easier it is for you, the easier it is it's gonna be for me and it's, we're both gonna have a fun time during the tattoo. I like to tell everybody for the healing process, uh, the first couple days are gonna suck. Hot water sucks, the sun hurts. Uh, definitely act like a baby, don't let people touch it. Don't let people smack it or bless it, that is so bad. You can get a blowout or uh, inflammation from it and you paid a lot of money for your tattoo, you don't want it to, to end up uh, don't let people do that to you. The healing process is about half of the tattoo process. Uh, it, I can give you the best tattoo in the world, but as soon as you walk out that door, the rest is on you and you do want to take care of it. Uh, you're going to put on your, uh, your ointment or healing lotion two to three times a day, depending on how dry it gets. Me personally, I get super dry. I have to put it on like eight, 10 times a day. It's, it's ridiculous. After about four days, you're gonna get super itchy. Don't scratch it, don't scrub it. At the most, give it a, a nice pat, you know what I mean? Uh, to, for a little bit of relief. You'll, you'll know you did a good job with your healing of your tattoo if it's a thin layer of skin that comes off. It's, if it's too thick or almost like a scab, you didn't do a good job and it definitely needed more ointment. You're gonna be back for a follow-up slash touch-up on your tattoo. After that first week, anywhere from five to seven days, it's gonna look a little gray, it's gonna look a little dull, don't worry about that. You only need to put on ointment or lotion once or twice a day at the most. And then that color, the, the deepness of your tattoo will start to come back. Everybody heals different. Anywhere from being somebody who's a homebody and doesn't get a lot of sun, doesn't come in contact with a lot of stuff, or a construction worker that's always bumping into stuff who has some really hard skin, everybody's skin heals differently that's okay. Once you start getting tattoos, you, you start to understand your skin type, how your tattoos heal, whether you need a lot of follow-ups or not. It's always recommended you at least do one follow-up on all of your tattoos. Some of them can stay solid for a shot, which is great, but it will look even much better after a follow-up. Yeah, tattooing construction workers, especially cement workers, it, it can be a little scary. It can be like really hard to get the ink into. I've, I've actually, I remember one guy I was tattooing, I went and did that first line. I go and wipe away the black, nothing. And I'm like, oh shit. I do that second line to go over it a, a little harder. I wipe away the black. Now I just see a, a bloody red line. I'm like, oh no, how am I gonna get this ink in this kit? So yeah, your day-to-day -day can affect your tattoo work. I like to tell guys, lotion up. You have hydrated skin. Uh, you're always taking care of your skin. Your tattoos are gonna look great. I've seen a lot of guys who start getting more and more tattoos. They become a tattoo collector. Now they're shaving every day. They're putting ointment on every day. They really start taking care of their skin. Just like how a collector of artwork that they pay $20,000, $50,000 for a beautiful piece, they know the perfect spot on the wall. They get the right lighting. They make sure everything looks perfect. It's the same way you would treat your skin. Start taking care of your tattoo work. 
that you paid a lot of good money for. Yeah, man, check us out on, on TikTok. That's actually been the, the one that's been doing it for me. I felt like an old person on TikTok, to be honest with you guys. It's a little embarrassing. I had no idea what to post. Uh, it turns out people really want to know uh, this side of tattooing, which in the industry is not really talked about. And that's one of those things that I wanted to bring to the table that I think was unique, that I wanted to teach people and educate them on tattoos, uh, not just tattoo artists, but also the clientele, the, the, the collectors that are getting tattoo work. Uh, so that way you have an understanding of what to look for, how to find a good artist, how to, what are the red flags that you're going to run into so that way you can get away from bad tattoo artists and bad tattoo shops because they still exist out there. And it's nothing against those tattoo shops, but at least this way we can all educate each other and come to, come to a place where we can all share, uh, share the ins and outs of the tattoo world so that way you get the best tattoo work for your money it's, it sucks to waste your hard-earned money on something that's going to be permanent on you and then you end up hating it it's a sucky feeling it's incredible to see the community that we're building now and i knew that there was some horror stories out there with the tattoo industry I just didn't realize how prevalent it was. If you ever get a chance, hit the comments, man. Read those those stories. It's truly unfortunate. And I do think we're doing something good for the tattoo industry. A lot of people in the tattoo industry might not agree with it. And some people might even want to bring me down for it. That's fine. Uh, understandable. No worries. We're going to raise the consciousness level. Uh, and hopefully they can also... Uh, see that we're not trying to cause harm, that we're trying to cause good in the tattoo world. I'm actually really glad tattoos found me. And if you talk to any, anybody who's been in the industry for a long time, they will always tell you that tattoo finds you. But it helped me stay out of trouble for a long period of my life. Uh, I'm going to say till from 15, 16, all the way to 24, 25, I was doing drugs. I was partying, uh, drinking. Uh, every weekend, even throughout the week, uh, and it was it was getting really bad at one point, and I sat there trying to figure out uh, how the trajectory of my life uh, ended up in in jail, uh, looking at myself like I'm not this type of person, and tattoos was one of the steady constants in my life. It actually helped me start to imagine a career for myself, a trajectory. Because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Ever since high school, everybody knew oh, I'm going to go be an engineer, a lawyer, a doctor. Everybody knew. You would ask them. They, they'd tell you what college, what university they're going to be accepted to. I had no idea. I hated school. I hated it with a, with a passion. And it, to come to find out, it's because I'm an artist. And I'm glad tattoos found me. I, I consider myself, uh, that's my identity. That, that's, it's my passion now. To get a hold of me, you would actually go to our website, uh, jacobjank.com. Uh, all my socials have the link in the bio. You can click on there and get to the website. Shoot me a message off of there. It comes through his email for us. It's, so that way we can stay organized because, again, my brain is crazy. Um, but that's the best way. You fill out a questionnaire. Um, you'll talk to our assistant, and then she'll get you on the books. And then I'll be reaching out to you uh, prior to the tattoo to talk about your design, uh, to thank you for getting on the books with us. Uh, and then create it as time goes on right before we get to the uh, to the appointment. We're located in Phoenix, Arizona, near the Biltmore area, Uptown Phoenix, 12th Street in Highland.